Hi Cupcakes, I'm going to talk you through now a few of my um, things I've purchased recently that I'm excited about um, on the spiritual end of things. My plans for 2014 in terms of what I'm going to be studying because I'm quite excited about the turn into the new year and I think um, a lot of people this year are much more excited to kind of embrace 2014 than they were to embrace 2013 which is nice. <laughs> I think the crossover last year was a little bit hectic. But this year it seems like there really is a sense of, of potential um, and I suppose it is all about perspective but opinions tend to carry in that area I think. Like uh, if you meet one person who feels they had a hectic year or a crappy year you're likely to meet loads of people who feel the same way. Um, so I think it's interesting to note that a lot of people in my personal life and online and so on seem to be really excited I suppose what the Americans would call pumped <laughs> for 2014. Um, so I'm really excited too. I um, have a New Year's resolution, my key New Year's resolution is to study Islam, which is why you're looking at a Holy Quran, even though I'm a pantheist pagan chaos witch. Um, Islam is one, the only one of the three key Abrahamic triad that I've ever been massively interested in and quite intrigued by. Um, even as a, a small child, the call to prayer I found to be very moving and very enigmatic and I wanted to know more. When I was at school I learned kind of the fundamental basics of Islamic belief, uh, much of which I've forgotten. I want to learn about Islam to further my own study of comparative religion in general. I'm kind of a geek, an amateur comparative religion geek, um, so it's really for my own sense of satisfaction. Um, I have a few Muslim friends, I'd like to get a better handle on um, you know, the depth of, of what it is that they believe to be true about spirituality and God and life and all of that good stuff. And also, if um, if there's anybody out there who's been living under a rock or in a cave for the last few years, you may be the only ones who failed to notice that um, there's a lot of politics over the past decade or so with regard to Islamic belief, Islam in society and um, various different pockets of people, definitely in the UK, um, and I know in the, in the US, who have decided to select the most peevish or the most extremist or the most fundamentalist and ugly elements of um, Islamic belief as a spectrum across society, and have decided to amplify that as the entire whole of what Islam is about, um, with complete ignorance, total and complete ignorance of anything that's written in the Quran. Um, most of them don't know any Muslim people, don't want to know any Muslim people, don't have any friends from other ethnic minorities, never mind, strictly from, uh, from uh, the Muslim faith. So I would like to do my part um, for social integration and multiculturalism, which I truly believe in. I know I'm getting a bit political here, but I feel like um, I would be doing my bit to um, really prove that I believe in that and that I really think that we can have um, cross spiritual discussions and I really think we can have spiritual and religious dialogue um, across the board. So I'm doing it for that reason too. Um, so I've purchased the Holy Quran. It also came with these um, with these really, really useful little booklets. Um, one thing that I've learned since deciding to get into the study of Islam is that Muslims are extremely helpful and friendly and welcoming to non-Muslims who would like to have um, a better understanding of the faith. And in fact, if you are a Muslim, um, you're encouraged not to buy a cut price or discount price Quran, whereas non-Muslims are um, permitted to, or it's not frowned upon. So I noticed when I was purchasing my Quran, there was a lot of messages saying, you know, if you're a Muslim, don't purchase this. This is for our non-Muslim friends and associates and students who would like to get a better handle on the message. So that was interesting. Um, so I found these really interesting booklets came with it too. And this one, a gift of words, which is just quotes from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Um, it is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Much like a lot of the stuff I've read um, from Christ in the Gospels. Same message, same very timeless, very important message for humanity. So me and Muhammad are going to get along great. Um, I also purchased this book the other day, Understanding Islam, which was coincidentally just sitting right there in the discount bookstore for me. So that was good. And I have joined an online um, course which will lead me towards a diploma in Islamic studies. And that is something that takes place in modules. And you have guidance and you have audio files and PDFs and so on that you have to go through. And with every module, once you're confident that you understand what's involved with that module, you can take a multiple choice test to get you to the next stage of the diploma. Um, and I've taken a look at the 
the list of the different modules and, and it's just going to be absolutely fascinating there are going to be cultural issues there um, different in-depth studies of different parts of the Quran understanding Islam in contemporary society understanding the different ways that Muslims interpret different parts of the Quran so it's just going to basically be absolutely awesome and that is my key New Year's resolution for 2014 so I cannot wait to get started with that um, I also recently purchased a book on Shinto. Now, Shinto is one of those um, religions slash belief systems that it's really difficult to get any in-depth information on for a few reasons, which I won't go into here. But I'm really fascinated by Shinto. My boyfriend has travelled in Japan and is very interested in Shinto uh, and Japanese Buddhism and wabi-sabi and just, you know, the whole culture, geisha, that whole thing. So he's very interested in the history of Japan and in their... Uh, the spiritual makeup of the society as a whole and Shinto is something that really appeals to me um, even just looking at a Shinto temple and looking at the way they represent their kami and looking at the um, the things that they do before they enter the temple etc um, the whole makeup of Shinto actually really inspires me and seems like it fits quite well with a lot of the things that I do with regard to ritual and with regard to using belief as a tool even the way I decorate my altar a lot of the stuff that I have around kind of speaks to the Shinto aesthetic so I'm quite interested really in just learning more learning more about the the kami and the role that the kami play um, you know in, in terms of what the, the Japanese believe and understanding how Shinto has kind of permeated Japanese culture and is bigger than the sum of its parts I guess you could say so it's become more of a cultural tradition so I'm really interested in getting to learn about that and hopefully if I'm interested in what's um, in this book, how witchy is this nail colour? It's called Moonstruck. I feel so witchy, like a retro 90s witch. Um, so, yeah, if I if I enjoy what's in this book and I'm curious to learn more, then I'm hoping I'll be able to find a much more kind of lengthy, um, meaty resource. Uh, you might notice that I constantly use the term meaty to describe, like, nurturing and good and lots of it. And I also say um, you can get a lot of meat off the bone quite a lot of the time. It's really funny because I'm a really strict vegetarian and I have been for about 14 years. <laughs> no, wait, no, m longer. God, is it really that long? It's a long time. I'm, I'm, I'm old. I'm no spring chicken. So, um, yeah, I've been vegetarian for ages, so it's quite strange that I should use all of these meat idioms, but there we go. Um, okay, so as I've mentioned in a couple of videos before, I am rereading the works of Jung, um, and I'm taking fresh notes, and I'm going back over things that I don't quite remember, and I'm revising things that um, I've made into a central part of my spiritual outlook and would like to return to. I just wanted to show you, um, I've already shown you guys the book, in the chaos magic and daily practice video it's just a standard blue um hardback piece of lush stationery but i just wanted to show you the four texts that i am actually revisiting with gusto uh four archetypes this is one that i would definitely recommend if you're interested in reading young uh from source rather than from analysts uh jungian analysts uh dreams obviously this is a this is a pretty essential work here modern man in search of a soul i would definitely recommend this one and the undiscovered self, um, now this has quite a political flavour, but it's very thin and you will learn a lot um, about his outlook um, on certain subjects that I feel it would kind of be naive to overlook in a sense. So I'm going th back through the undiscovered self. I've already reread it once and I'm going through again. I have two copies of this book. So I have one that I've absolutely destroyed with highlighter and stuff like that. And one that I've been quite polite with, which is great. Uh, because my boyfriend and my boyfriend's mother both had the same idea at the same time. So I got two copies. Uh, what else did I want to say? Okay, so I'm studying um, Thoth slash Toth slash Toeth. <laughs> I'm coming to learn that there are a great many ways to say this word. Um, and I think, I think it's uh, fair to say that many of the Lemites don't seem to pronounce it as Thoth, but I could be wrong. I'm going to stick with Thoth for now because I haven't really looked into the etymological stem of the word or really done any key research on why we would or would not call it Thoth. So I'm just going to go with that for now, but I'm really sorry if it offends the ears of anybody who is um, quite adept at uh, Crowley and what he stood for and so on. I'm sorry if that's a total bastardization of a word which is um, quite important to get right from your perspective. But yeah, I'm studying Thoth now. Um, I didn't get the book out to show you guys, but... Uh, as you guys know, I'm, I'm using the uh, the Duquette book. Where is it? I'm not sure where I've put it. 
but at this point now it's um i'm on to chapter four so i'm getting into um the kabbalistic system i've had to write a few hebrew words already which was a total nightmare and i'm sure i completely murdered uh, the hebrew alphabet there but I'm learning the Hebrew alphabet, I'm learning key Hebrew words which pertain to certain um, things that are very central to what Thoth is all about. Um, I've learned so much, so much already from the Duquette book, it's really, really good. It's a shame that I haven't actually got it on hand because it's, um, it's ever so colourful now with post-it notes and things sticking out of it so it makes me feel quite the student. But um, I also wanted to mention this book, Tarot Mirror of Your Relationships by Gerd Ziegler. Um, I purchased this book quite a long time ago when I was just going through, um, oh that's beautiful, didn't even notice that on the back there, I'm sure I did at the time but I've not gotten this book out for a while, uh, I purchased this book when I was going through this phase of just picking up loads and loads of old retro looking second hand tarot books and I realised when I bought it that it actually pertains to Thoth and not to a standard tarot deck. Um, like for example there was lust in there and art in there instead of temperance and strength etc so I realized quickly that it was for a it was a Thoth guidebook and actually the writing in it is very beautiful and quite um, rich and instructive so I'm probably going to be using this as well um, as the well when I get down to the interpretations and learning how to actually set up spreads etc um, obviously there's a lot of background that goes on before that the Duquette book actually isn't that focused on how to interpret cards in terms of divination uh, the Duquette book is a lot a lot of backstory and a lot of actually understanding the system in terms of what it pictorially represents and um, all of the different occult inspirations that Crowley has drawn from etc so really it's a background book um, and it's very good for that but I think mirror of your relationships might be quite useful to get me thinking more about how I could interpret my use of this deck um, into useful readings for people that need my guidance um, I'm also branching out, as I told you guys, um, just trying to work out, work with other imagery, like for example, Gypsy Palace Tarot. I have a book for my path working in meditations with Gypsy Palace Tarot, and I'm really looking forward to getting to the stage where I can offer readings with Gypsy Palace Tarot. It's certainly a deck that I feel gives me a lot of inspiration, a lot of springboards to jump from, so it's not going to be that long. Um, and my boyfriend also purchased Manga Tarot for me for Christmas. I really love this deck. Um, it's, it's just beautiful. If you're on my Facebook Four Queens page, you'll notice that just today I posted a photo of the image of the moon from Manga Tarot, which is just one of the sweetest tarot cards in existence, surely. It's just so adorable. So I'm going to be working with that too. Um, I also took my... Um, my Waterstones uh, gift card that my brother bought me for Christmas and I purchased the Shaman's Oracle. Now I was very close to not purchasing the Shaman's Oracle because I'm a huge fan of Morrissey and the Smiths and I wanted to get Morrissey's autobiography but then I decided I can pick that up another time because I'm reading quite a lot of things at the moment so um, I picked up the Shaman's Oracle. I'm really excited about um, starting to work with this deck too because this is uh, obviously an oracle deck so it's a totally different vibe and I do really enjoy um, complementing my love for tarot with getting involved with oracle cards and uh, using other kinds of structure so I'm really really excited to learn with this deck it's one that I've thought I wanted to pick up for quite a while because I really love the names of the cards um, Shaman of Purification Ancestor of Hope Dancer of Joy. I mean, you can't argue with Dancer of Joy, can you really? You know that's going to be a good reading, a good nourishing reading. And it comes with this very helpful book. Um, I would rate this as what tarot students would call the little white book. I would definitely rate this. It's beautiful. Um, so it's going to really help me to use the Shaman Oracle, which is good. Uh, my boyfriend purchased this book for me, Dreams of Awakening, Lucid Dreaming and Mindfulness of Dream and Sleep by Charlie Morley, which is going to be really cool. Um, he's kind of approached lots of Tibetan ideas on um, waking dreams and um, I, I guess there's going to be a lot of things in there that pertain to, pertain to astral travel. He has combined a lot of his experiences with Eastern techniques and studies that he's done and then translated them and updated them for, uh, for a Western perspective. So this is going to be cool. I've, I've only had two lucid dreams in my adult life and they both occurred in 2013. 
when I was younger I used to lucid dream all the time I used to actually decide what I wanted to dream before I fell asleep and quite often I found that I could make that happen but I didn't realize that there was anything quite so special about that back then obviously so now I'm really really keen to go into lucid dreaming again and it took me quite a long time to decide that I wanted to awaken this part of my interest when it comes to dreaming um, because I had a couple of people tell me that they didn't think that lucid dreaming was potentially right for me spiritually, uh, that it might be too destructive for me to have free will in dreams and that I might kind of overthink things or try and take too much control. But I dated a guy um, for about 18 months a few years ago and his mother was really interested in lucid dreaming and she printed me out um, a really interesting book on the subject and gave it to me and said, you know, there is absolutely no way that lucid dreaming could have a negative effect on you. It's had such a positive effect on me. It's changed my life. It's changed my sense of empowerment and who I am. Um, it's made me so excited to go to sleep. When I was younger, I used to think sleeping was a waste of time and now I know that it's a journey and... And she was a Christian too, so um, it was really kind of someone coming from a different spiritual standpoint and perspective to me who also saw the, the magic and the beauty of lucid dreaming. So I'm really interested in trying out the techniques in here and hopefully getting, uh, enjoying a few more lucid dreams because that last lucid dream I had was absolutely sensational. Uh, I was running around, I'm not going to tell you the whole premise of the dream right now, but um, at one point, the friend who was in my dream was saying, you've got to stop saying that you're in a lucid dream because if you keep saying it, you're going to wake up. And I was like, no, I'm in control. It's fine. <laughs> I know I'm asleep, but I'm in control. Let's carry on. And I, and I really was in control and I could carry on. So that was cool. Um, I wanted to talk briefly about something else, that I'm, something that I'm always studying, really. I'm, um, I'm really interested in thanatology, which... Um, loosely to explain it is the um, the political, social and spiritual implications surrounding or issues surrounding human death basically so uh, my sister bought me this really cool folder for Christmas and I thought I'm going to transfer all of the paperwork that I have from the study I did this year into this book um, so thanatology is something I'm always interested in and I'm hoping eventually to get some kind of diploma in it or something like that. Um, the, the institutions in this country um, that you can go to to do a degree in thanatology are very, very few. Um, but there is one quite reputable thanatology diploma online which I'm hoping to do at some point. Um, I purchased this book, Staring at the Sun, Overcoming the Dread of Death. Um, in my video about the negative side of positive thinking, I talk about how dangerous it is uh, within western thought largely to consider death to somehow be the enemy or to somehow be something that should be um dreaded and and worried about and avoided at all costs until the moment when it's actually happening um i have a few friends who have a severe fear of of, dread, of death um and are very anxious about death either their own or the death of loved ones and it actually paralyzes them emotionally to an extent i've noticed and they've come to me to talk about it i've noticed that people do come to me when, when people have died or when they are experiencing the fear of, of the inevitable. That seems to be where I'm most useful <laughs> amongst my friendship group. So I'm going to read Staring at the Sun because I would like to know what kind of advice this guy is giving to people who are fearful of death and I'd like to compare it to the kind of advice that I give and I would like to also compare his experience um, with my own experience at the time when I realised that death was something that I wanted to embrace and I wanted to become one with. Um, I'm not by any means saying that my journey with the concept of death is, is over, but I've, I've done a lot of travelling with regard to that subject over the last decade, and I would really like to be able to impart more advice to others. I am planning on doing a video about death and about acceptance of death and how we can invite that, so I will be doing that anyway. But um, this book was something that really kind of call to me when I walked into the bookshop and I kept not buying it and not buying it and eventually I thought I'd like to know what his perspective is so I'm going to read that um, and finally this is not really a spiritual in nature at all but I just thought I would mention to you guys that if you don't see me for a while or if I am kind of not really such a big presence online for a few weeks at a time it is because my boyfriend and I have one joint New Year's resolution and that is to learn Spanish <laughs> so um, <laughs> we're going to be doing that he has family in Spain and I have Mexican and Spanish ancestry so I guess I should really get on with it um, it was never part of my plan um, so I mean my, my second language is, is Russian 
Uh, I was fluent in that at one time. I'm, I'm, I'm finding myself a little rusty now because I've not been there for so long. Um, and other sort of other things have come into my line of sight that I've been really interested in studying, uh, which is really sad. And I am planning on doing uh, brushing up a little on my Russian next year. But yeah, Spanish will will be hopefully my third language and the second language that I have consciously decided to learn. So we're going to reserve one night per week, every week, to learn Spanish. And also, hopefully, I'll be putting some on my iPod and, you know, be doing the dutiful thing and, <laughs> like, not skipping down the road to drum and bass or head banging to metal, but instead listening to Spanish and dutifully repeating what I'm hearing. Um, so, yeah, that's it, really. I'm, uh, I'm very excited about everything I'm going to be learning in the new year and focusing on in the new year. I'm going to do some videos soon, hopefully. Um, a uh, Somebody emailed me, I think it was Amy. Hi Amy, if you're watching. Um, I'm sorry I haven't replied yet. I'm, I'm really, really finding email um, a little bit kind of intense at the moment. I'm really sorry, guys. Anyone waiting on an email from me, I am genuinely very sorry. I've been... <laughs> so busy with the run up to Yule and then the run up to Christmas and trying to ensure that everybody um, gets their readings within the seven day time frame, which has been tough, but I have managed to do it. Um, and, uh, you know, it, there's just been a lot going on. Um, I do, I think, have have some level of emotional resistance towards opening my email inbox and I need to deal with that, which is why I've purchased a diary and I will be planning on, um, you know, definitely <coughs> um, organising time every week which will be non-negotiable. You have to open your email account now and get things done. So I'm going to do that. So I'm, I'm really sorry if you feel that I've overlooked you or that I've ignored you. I'm not trying to. Um, but I noticed that Amy sent an email asking me if I could do a video about runes. Um, in fact, this is actually quite an interesting request because I have a certain way of, when I was learning the runes, I came up with certain ways to interpret the images of each rune so that I could remember their meaning. I used a pictorial association in order to remember the key meaning of each rune. And I would love to teach that to you guys. If there's anyone out there, any willing rune students who are frustrated, um, are not sure where to start, you're just looking at these images and thinking they're just sticks and lines and sticks, <laughs> don't worry, fear not, because I have a, a really cool way, I think anyway, of, um, of remembering them. So yeah, I'm definitely going to do a video about that. I'm also going to do a video showing off my journals um, because I've seen a few videos recently where there's been a lot of, of journal porn going on and my god do I love journals. I am a stationary whore. Um, and so I'm going to show you my journals. And I'm also going to show you a tarot deck that I actually created um, earlier this year. It's not completed yet, but I'm interested in completing it as I move into 2014. Um, it's not to, you know, it's not going to be printed. It's not going to be put out there or anything like that. It was just for me, for my spiritual growth and own personal creative amusement, really. But I'd love to show you guys. So I'm going to show you that too. And finally, I just wanted to um, recommend a few channels, if I may. If you guys are looking for something new to watch and you may have overlooked one of these channels, I would love to um, to give you some recommendations, see if there's anything that um, you could watch that has kind of resonated with me, that might resonate with you too. Let's just um, let's do something interesting on camera while I'm talking about this stuff. Okay, Gypsy Palace Tarot. <laughs> Okay, so the first um, the first channel that I want to recommend is uh, Bramble1976. Um, she is a witch and she talks about her path and I find that um, she talks in a way that's accessible. She's very honest and open. I really enjoy her perspective on things and I'm always really excited to see that she's uploaded something new. I can't remember when I subscribed to her, but I really enjoy what she has to say. If you're a witch and um, you're looking for more input from people with different perspectives and stuff, do add her if you haven't already. Uh, Anya Orga, oh my god, you have to subscribe to this woman. <laughs> if you're watching this right now and you've gotten this far through it, there's no reason why you wouldn't love this woman. Um, she's a tarot student, she's a naturalistic pantheist, she talks about her spirituality, her journey, her perceptions, ritual... Um, she really gives you a little portal into her mind and her mind is fabulous. So I would definitely recommend subscribing to Anya, especially if you enjoy my tarot content. I must say that particularly. Her take on tarot is fantastic and it's expanding all the time. So she's really sharing with you her perceptions and uh, they're very interesting. Uh, Gin Free Mind, just really interesting 
explorations of a personal spiritual journey um, spoken in a very um, soft, very uh, rich and very inviting manner. I really, really enjoy Jim Freemind's channel. Definitely subscribe. Um, Amanda Nix, I, dis I discovered her a while ago. Um, she is what I suppose you would term a light worker in her own words. She's been through a lot of struggles in her life and overcome a lot of obstacles and challenges. And I love the way she talks about her journey and what she's been through and the kind of advice that she imparts from an exceptionally personable personal sorry place um, she also has a beautiful southern drawl of some description I don't know where she's from but her voice is just delicious um, high on health is a pretty cool channel that I recently discovered um, this woman I think uh, in, invented some kind of acne website to help people to deal with their acne in a, in a natural way and then started making videos but now she's kind of branched out into discussing spirituality and personal evolution and she films quite a lot of her videos from cool locations because she travels around so I really enjoy listening to her recently. Uh, Ike Therese is absolutely amazing she will encourage you to be so much more creative, so much more um, motivated on your path. She's really creative. She makes recipes, um, she makes things for her altar, she has such an incredible lifestyle I would say almost. Um, if it, There's a Yule video on her channel which is just incredible where she's making like some kind of Polish vodka and then she's making something else for a ritual and she just really energises me. Um, Therese really energises me. She really inspires me and she makes me think about how much potential as a witch and as a spiritual being and as a woman and as a human um, I might potentially be wasting on, you know, scrolling my Facebook feed. I mean, she is getting some stuff done and I love that about her. So I would definitely recommend you subscribe to IQ Therese. Al Moon 513 if you like my channel and you like my tarot content I'm sure you already know Al, Al Moon 513 um, but if you if you don't and you want people that are reviewing tarot and talking about how to use tarot and giving helpful lessons she is incredible and she is also you know not difficult on the eye either she looks like some kind of, of strange angel um, <laughs> Not that that is the reason that I am subscribed, okay? But um, yeah, she's she's just incredible. I love her take on tarot. I really enjoy the way she teaches. It's very accessible. Uh, Moria Garner, I'm going to put in the list below too. I've recently subscribed to her channel. She discusses her personal path and her personal perceptions, um, her ideas about deity, and I really love her accent. Um, I really enjoy a good a good accent from north of. Uh, Stoke-on-Trent, uh, London. I'm trying to I'm trying to front that I know exactly where she's from, but she's got a beautiful accent, and she just, just talks about her path in a really open and interesting way. And I think that's what a lot of witches are looking for on YouTube, really, isn't it? Just to a lot of witches aren't really looking to be taught anything, or if they're looking to be taught something, it's something quite specific. Um, they're not really looking for instruction on every last thing. Our paths are, are so different and so. Um, unique that I think a lot of the time what we're looking for are vlogs that we can kind of nod and smile at and relate to and be like yeah no totally I, <laughs> I've been having that same predicament myself or thinking about that myself and it's really interesting to know how other people are progressing so if people are brave enough to share it then you know I'm, I'm definitely interested enough to watch it a lot of the time. Um, Saika Leylin, she is a fellow occultist, um, she's a Thelemite, I love listening to her talk about her personal journey and her path, she is so enthusiastic, she is such a big reader, she's such a huge bookworm, um, she, really, she really is carving out her own pathway and really going to find what speaks to her and eating everything that tastes good and spitting out everything that doesn't and I love her energy, I love her drive, I love her sense of motivation and she is just all the way through to the core of her, a spiritual being. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of videos in her, in her back catalogue when you go back through what she's recorded that will be extremely interesting. Um, Shannon Kylia, again, um, somebody who talks about their path openly, discusses the, um, the evolutions that go on, the different shifts on her journey, and I love listening to her talk. I think she's very sweet, I think she's very sincere and authentic. I really enjoy learning anything and everything I can learn about her life and her perception of her spiritual pursuits, so I definitely recommend um, adding Shannon Kylia. Um, Sterling Starseed, I subscribed to a few months ago. She talks about personal development, um, 
about owning your personal power, the spiritual journey, how to live holistically, how to live at one with your personal values. She has a really sweet nature and a really sweet way of putting things across. And I just love that about her. So definitely subscribe to Sterling Starseed if you haven't already. And finally, Jordan Levine. Um, I really enjoy some of what he has to say. He made a great video the other day about um well i mean it was really just about disappearing from what you're doing that when you're trying to enter the state of godhead as i would call it um you uh, the whole trick is to become one with it to not even know that it's you anymore to not even be of your body anymore and he was talking and i was just like i totally had this same revelation last night while i was listening to alan watts obviously and i love the way he expresses it he's very enthusiastic um and he can teach you about qigong and um you know uh, he really enjoys talking about energy how to direct it how to use it to shield yourself if you're interested in that kind of thing jordan will be a delight to you and he seems to be making a few more videos recently so um okay that's uh, all i wanted to say for now just some recommendations and some bits and pieces of my plans and stuff much love guys blessed be